but I'm a stickler for not wasting food. And you know, my kids and, and, and my wife will tell you that, that when we go to a restaurant and you know, if we don't finish the food that's presented to us, then I always say, waiter, you know, can I get a doggy bag? And we put the stuff in the doggy bag and we bring it home simply because I don't like wasting. And you know, also it gives us a chance to eat the food at a later stage. But the challenge is when the doggy bag lies in the fridge and nobody gets to it, and it stays there and it begins to ferment and to a stage gets rotten. And after a while, you find that the fridge doesn't smell very nice. And I found that, you know, when I worked in, uh, in companies where sometimes people would start and then they would leave, but their food is still left in the refrigerator. And after a few weeks, you know, it starts to smell and then the whole place starts to smell. And what we had to do was we had to do regular clean outs. To get into the refrigerator and if things were there for too long, all the rotten stuff, all the fermented stuff, we had to get rid of it and make sure that, you know, there was a healthy environment. Because in the extreme cases, you know, that, that rotten food can lead to food poisoning with all the spores and all the things that, that come out of it. And it can be poisonous to us. Now, I don't know about you, but, you know, we're not supposed to have any type of poison, even a little poison. And that was what was happening in the church at Thyatira that they had allowed false teaching, they had allowed immorality, they had allowed sin to ferment and to stay in there just a little bit. And over time, it began to stink to an extent where it began to infiltrate and poison. The other time I spoke about a little leaven, leavening the lump. Well, that's what happened. The poison had gone into the whole church structure, that people were now gone astray to the extent where Jesus had to rebuke them, that they had embraced the teachings of the evil prophetess Jezebel. So this is where I want to encourage you that as much as you may be looking to save and to not waste things, to get in and remove anything that is not of God. The scripture reading for this message is from Revelation chapter 2, verses 18 to 26. And, you know, of note, and what I want to highlight is as we get into this, uh, this study, is that um, when we look at the uh, chapter 2 and we look at the churches in chapter 3, we need to admit and we need to accept and acknowledge that uh, the church lives in a hostile world uh, back then and even more so uh, today. And that's how it's always been, that um, hostility is always there against the church. And this is why it's so important that as the church of Jesus Christ, that we don't shy away, we don't move away from correction and from rooting out the evil, but we always move towards it. Now, off note is that, uh, you know, the context for these letters to the churches in chapter 2 and chapter 3 is this hostility towards the church. But the good news is that, you know, we know the devil, not today, not ever, that with the Lord Jesus Christ with us, who can be against us? So on that note, we move on to the church at Thyatira. Now, interestingly, that uh, even though this was the smallest of the uh, seven churches, this was the longest letter uh, written to them. And uh, we find that, you know, it highlights this negative progression. We looked at the church at Ephesus where they had lost their first love. And then we moved on, you know, to the church at, at Pergamos or Pergamum and how they had uh, compromised. And because of compromising and tolerating sin, it led to them bringing in the throne of Satan. That's what uh, the Bible describes him. Now, for the church at Thyatira, what's of note is that in verse 24, it has spiraled into the deeper things of Satan. Now, this book needs to be read again, very simply because you find that in the context of today, this is what could happen to the church when it tolerates sin, uh, the false teaching and immorality, because that's what was rampant. And when we pick it up in verse 18, we hear and we see that Jesus now, similar to what he presented himself to Pergamos as the one with the two-edged sword, not the cute little baby in the manger, is now the one with the blazing fire and whose feet is like bronze and brass. Now that's a sign of authority. That's a sign of fear. So we learn that the sympathy is over. And what we have now is a Lord and Savior that is coming in as the roaring lion of Judah. He's coming in as a judge. You know, he's with blazing fire. Feet are like bronze and brass. And this is not a comforting 
image at all, but it is a threatening and a fearful image of Jesus appearing before the church at Thyatira. And I can assure you, it's not a letter that any church would want to receive uh, from Jesus Christ. So, you know, what we learn from this and the lesson that we've learned already from the other churches, but more so with Thyatira, is that God does not tolerate sin. And so should we, especially the leaders in the church, because this is why they were being rebuked by this letter to Thyatira. And, you know, the evidence of being a true believer is not giving in to, to false teaching. We don't fall into false teaching immorality, but we hold fast to the word of God. And you see here, you know, as we've spoken about in the, uh, the churches earlier, especially Pergamos, there were two major false teachings or false teachers that had come in. One was the teaching of Balaam and the other one was the teaching of the Nicolaitans. And in the teaching or in this message to Thyatira, there is the woman Jezebel, the spirit of Jezebel. Jezebel was being introduced. Verse 20, it says that Jezebel was teaching sexual immorality and eating food to idols. Now, I just want to pause there. Now, you may be saying, but mine, you know what? I don't ever eat food sacrificed to idols. But let's take a step back. What is God implying by that? You know, food sacrificed to idols, food set aside for idols, is partaking of things that have not been consecrated for God, not been set apart. So when we look at food that's sacrificed to idols, it could be also a message that God is giving us not to participate in activities and things that God has not ordained for us to participate in. So whilst it may not be literally eating food sacrificed to idols, it could be activities, it could be places that God does not want us to dwell in or to have anything to do with them. And that's what holiness is about. So Jezebel, who was Jezebel? Well, if you look at the Bible, it says that she was the wife of King Ahab and she practiced witchcraft. Second Kings chapter 9 speaks about that. But more importantly, Jezebel greatly hindered King Ahab's ability to worship God, to seek God, and to follow the ordinances of God. Because she worshipped the false gods, 1 Kings chapter 16, and she misled others to do the same. And, and to her discredit, she tried to kill the one true prophet of God at the time, who was Elijah. And we see that in 1 Kings 18, that she set Ahab against him. She went about to destroy uh, Elijah, the prophet. So we need to take a lesson out of that, that when Jesus is rebuking the teaching of Jezebel in, uh, in verse 20 uh, to Thyatira, we need to also understand that, you know, as much as I've been saying that the devil is not just uh, inside the church, yeah, in Thyatira, the devil was literally in front of the pulpit manifesting in Jezebel. So we've got to take note that when false teachers reign and rule supreme in the church, that it is really that aspect where you find that it is Satan that's now taking control. So the spirit of Jezebel, similar to Jezebel in the Bible, uses deception and seduction to destroy God's people and God's work. Now, especially to leaders in the church today, take note that the spirit of Jezebel usually attacks God's people and God's people of authority and leads others against such authority through lies and manipulation. So similar to Jezebel in the Bible, you know, she attached herself to King Ahab, a person of authority, and she was able to sway and turn and manipulate and, and direct him away from the things of God. Leaders of God and leaders in the church today have to be so careful that people that are advising them People that are in their privy, people that are in their council have to be really scrutinized and, and to be people that are of the spirit and people of truth, people that are leading, leading the leader towards the things of God and not away. So that was what it was with Jezebel.